In this lesson, we're going to learn how to multiply two fractions together. We're going to use the fractions 2 thirds. We're going to multiply that by 3 fourths. Now, when you multiply whole numbers together, you often get an answer or product that is much larger than the two factors you multiply together. With multiplication of fractions, you actually get a smaller answer. Another way to think about multiplication of fractions is 2 thirds times 3 fourths can be written also as 2 thirds of 3 fourths. So with that in mind, many times when you're working a word problem and you see the word of, that could mean that of is a signal word to let you know that you need to use multiplication to solve the problem. That does not mean that of will always be a signal word. You really have to think about what the problem is asking you to determine if multiplication is necessary to solve. So for multiplication of fractions, it's uh, a little bit simpler than adding or subtracting fractions. You don't need to find a common denominator. So don't make the common mistake of trying to find a common denominator to multiply two fractions together. To find your new numerator, or your answer, you will multiply straight across your numerators, 2, times 3, and that equals 6. To find your new denominator, you multi multiply straight across your denominators, 3 times 4, and that equals 12. Now, we found 2 thirds of 3 fourths. So to help understand why 2 thirds of 3 fourths in your answer will be smaller, we're going to use a brownie pan or a model to represent two-thirds times three-fourths. Now, first we're going to look at our first fraction, two-thirds. We're going to separate our brownie pan into vertical sections of three because we're representing our denominator of two-thirds, which is three. That means our whole is broken into three equal sections. Now, since I vertically represented these three sections, I'm going to vertically cross out my three so I know that I'm done with it. Now, our two, which is our numerator of this fraction, means two of these three equal parts. So I'm going to look at my area model on my brownie pan and I'm going to shade two of these three equal parts to represent my numerator of two-thirds. I'm going to cross out my two vertically just like I represented my sections vertically. Okay, now we're going to look at three-fourths. Since we represented two-thirds vertically, we're actually going to represent three-fourths horizontally. Now it might help to imagine our square completely empty and to pretend that we hadn't already represented two-thirds in our square. We're going to represent, like I said, horizontally four equal sections. Or for our model we're going to make it as close to equal as we can. We don't need to measure to be sure that they're equal sections. Now we've represented our denominator of three-fourths. So I'm going to horizontally cross out my four so I know that I'm finished horizontally representing those four equal sections. Now we look at our numerator, three. I'm going to represent three of those four equal sections that I just that I just split in our brownie pan. So to represent these three sections, I'm going to use dots just to make it a little bit easier to see which ones are represented for three-fourths. And remember, I'm representing our whole horizontal sections for the three out of the four sections that we made. Okay, now we're finished representing, oh, I need to cross out my three horizontally. Now that I see that all my all my parts of my fractions are represented, I have them crossed out horizontally or vertically, I know that I'm, I'm finished. So I'm going to look at the square of the brownie pan that we made, and I'm going to count how many equal sections I have in that square all together for my two-thirds and my three-fourths. So we see little boxes that have been made up from crossing out these sections, or entering these sections in. And all together we see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 equal sections. So 12 is going to be my denominator. Now to find out what my numerator is, it's a little bit trickier. I'm going to look at all the sections that have both a dot in the box and are shaded. And we can see that 6 have both a dot and are shaded. So 6 is going to be my new numerator. And that gives me the answer of 6 twelfths. 2 thirds of 3 fourths is 6 twelfths. Now, many 
Many questions will ask you to write your answer or fraction in simplest form, so you need to simplify. Simplifying is just as simple as finding a factor that each your numerator and your denominator have in common. So a couple strategies for factoring. You can look to see if they're even numbers. 6 and 12 are both even numbers, so right away we know we could start with 2 if we weren't sure of any other factor. A lot of the times, or sometimes, your numerator will be a factor of your denominator. In this case, 6 is a factor of 12. So that shows me that 6 is our largest factor that 6 and 12 should have in common. So I'm going to divide my numerator by 6, and I'm going to divide my denominator by 6, because I'm being a copycat. Whatever you do to your numerator has, has to be done to your denominator to have a equivalent fraction. So my new fraction written in simplest form will be 6 divided by 6, which is 1, and 12 divided by 6, which is 2. So 6 halves or 6 twelfths, rather, is really equal to 1 half. And that's our final answer, written in simplest form, with a model used to represent our multiplication. Remember to multiply straight across your numerators to find your numerator, and straight across your denominators to find your denominator.